In 1950, East Germany establishes a Ministry for State Security. In 1957, Erich Mielke is named Minister of State Security. Mielke heads the ministry till November 1989. Number one is number one, not first on the property. That has nothing to do with it. When you enter, you're on the ground floor. Go up the stairs and you're on the upper ground level. The next flight of stairs takes you to the first floor. It wouldn't be proper for the minister to be on the second floor. This is floor one in house one. And this is the etage one. As central administration for the protection of the national economy, East Germany's first secret police is established in 1949. In 1950, it is transformed into the Ministry for State Security, commonly known as Stasi. It models itself on the Soviet secret police Cheka. Stasi personnel proudly call themselves Czechists. The ministry's central headquarters occupy an entire city block in East Berlin. In the 1980s, 20,000 employees work here for the Stasi. In 1953, the Stasi suffers an unexpected shock. It is caught completely off guard by the national uprising of June 17th. Soviet troops quell the revolt by force. We are going to go in now we're entering Milka's private realm, so to speak, where he could retreat. Here we have this small office. Its only notable feature are these Western television sets. They would rather trust in Western technology and not the clunky Raduga color sets from the Soviet Union. As you can see, there's no trace of golden water faucets or other luxuries withheld from mere mortals. Such things simply won't be found here. The Stasi is more than just the ministry in Berlin. We have also in Berlin the Ministry with Erich Milke on the side. 15 Bezirke, einschließlich Berlin. In Berlin, we have the ministry headed by Eric Milke. Under it are 15 districts, including Berlin, with a district administration in each, whose directors report directly to Milke. And under them are local administrative offices. In Leipzig, it's 13, each with its own specialist departments. Looking at their job descriptions, you won't find a single area of public life that didn't fall under the purview of one of these specialist departments to monitor and secure it. The local offices ensured total surveillance of the entire country. Fifteen district administrations and over 200 local offices blanket the whole country. By 
By the 1980s, the Stasi has over 90,000 full-time personnel. It is East Germany's largest government agency. The Stasi takes on more and more tasks. Next to domestic security, it is responsible for foreign espionage and counterintelligence, personal and site security, and border and passport checks. In a forest in northern Berlin, between Bernau and Wandlitz, is a location that can't be found on any East German map. In the late 1950s, the Stasi builds the forest colony here to guarantee the personal security of the party's ruling committee. 140 Stasi personnel guard the colony, Another 600 attend to the 23 families and party functionaries. Erich Honecker lives in Hawk Lane No. 5. Erich Mielke lives one street further in No. 1. Mielke is not only Minister for State Security, he's also head of SV Dynamo, the sports club for police, customs and Stasi. Mielke supports in particular the soccer team Berlin Dynamo and assigns the best players to Berlin. In spite of its success, Berlin Dynamo, known as the Stasi team, never wins favor with East Germany's soccer fans. Espionage is one of the Stasi's primary tasks during the Cold War. In the Satellite Reconnaissance Center in Biesenthal, north of Berlin, Central Department 3 uses 30-foot dish antennas to intercept Western satellite signals. Radio technology is of great interest to the Secret Service. The Stasi monitors all companies involved in constructing the TV tower on Berlin's Alexander Square. After its completion, seven employees of Central Department 20 remain active in the tower. Along the West German border, the Stasi installs antennas to eavesdrop on car phones and radio communications. At the time, Two-thirds of all West German phone calls are transmitted by wireless radio links. One primary link between Hanover and Munich crosses East German territory. In good weather, the Stasi could pick up calls from as far away as Frankfurt, Cologne and Bonn. Together with the National Army, the Stasi also conducts air reconnaissance near the border. Eavesdropping stations are installed in the freight holds of Antonov transport planes. There, Stasi personnel transcribe the monitored radio communications. In Operation Discant, the planes start in Dresden and follow the inner German border up to the Baltic Sea. Even though they wear border police uniforms, it is exclusively Stasi personnel who check travelers at East Germany's border checkpoints. the Stasi becomes increasingly occupied with finding qualified personnel. People can't apply for positions on their own. Every employee is approached and recruited by the Stasi. 
Man hat ja Personen, die sich selber hier beworben haben, vorne sich bei der Wache. People would come to the local office saying, I'd like to work for you as a secretary or such, because one could make more money than in the regular economy. As a rule, these people were rejected. It was always suspected they'd been sent by foreign intelligence services. So there were sometimes major personnel shortages and pressure to get a position filled in time. Frequently, the children of full-time employees would be hired. The reasoning was, we know their background, they grew up in our culture and are surely willing to work for us just as their parents do. And so we sometimes find entire families, father, mother, child, in the personnel lists. Stasi spies travel abroad under false passports. The ministry's Central Intelligence Administration targets primarily the Western neighbor, the Federal Republic of Germany. Not only East Germans, but some 2,000 citizens of the Federal Republic are active in the West as Stasi agents. The Stasi sees itself as East Germany's defender in the Cold War, the worldwide conflict between socialism and, in its terms, imperialism. Therefore, every criticism of the socialist system, every dissenting opinion, must come from outside, controlled by Western imperialist forces. Following this fatal logic, the Stasi starts a sort of cold civil war against its own people. Sometime in the 80s, the surveillance apparatus was assessed to find out exactly how many spies were under surveillance here in the district, how many were suspected of espionage, and how many were really spies. And here in the report for the Magdeburg district, it says that the result was sobering and disappointing. No spies were found here at all. Instead, only politically undesirable East German citizens were being scrutinized the entire time. Spy hunting, the essential Secret Service task, was basically not taking place at all. This focus on monitoring its own people requires a massive expansion of the Stasi. An even greater expansion was planned. Significantly, it took place during the period of détente prescribed by the party and codified as the policy of peaceful coexistence. It meant that Western correspondents had to be allowed into the country. The apparatus had to be modified with harsh 50s-style repression used only as a last resort. A whole new apparatus with a different orientation arises, and when we speak of Stasi, we really mean the party. This Ministry of State Security was nothing else than a subordinate agency of the party. We're talking about the party's ruling apparatus here. Shield and sword of the party is what the Stasi calls itself. Nine out of ten employees are party members. Till the demise of East Germany, the party dictatorship dares not to face its opponents. Instead, the Stasi has to keep all dissenting opinions under control. Dogs are trained to sniff out the originators of critical pamphlets. The Stasi collects scent samples of suspicious citizens. It develops special machines to open, copy if necessary, and reseal 90,000 letters a day sent from or to suspicious persons. Technical eavesdropping was one of the Stasi's major sources of information. Mail surveillance too, but primarily telephone wiretapping. And specifically targeted suspects would be bugged too. In East Germany, there is no free public expression of opinion. To keep the party informed of the citizens' sentiment, the Stasi probes with wiretapping devices, hidden cameras, 
and covert agents.